Hey there, it's Kenny, your friendly neighborhood history buff. Today, I want to introduce you to a fascinating figure from ancient China, Wang Mang. He's often referred to as the time traveler of his era because of all the progressive reforms he implemented that seemed ahead of his time. So, in today's video, we're going to dive deep into the life and legacy of Wang Mang. We'll explore his most significant reforms. Get ready for a journey through time as we unravel the story of the man who dared to dream of a better future. Let's go. Have you heard of Wang Mang? He was the guy who staged a coup and seized power from the Western Han Dynasty, establishing Xin Dynasty that only lasted 15 years. But why do people call him a time traveler? If you read about Wang Mang's rise to power and the reforms he implemented after establishing his new dynasty, you'd definitely think he was a modern person who had time traveled to ancient China. His development during the Western Han Dynasty was so impressive. Let me tell you more about Wang Mang. Wang Mang's rise to power was pretty impressive. He started out as a low-profile figure, but he secretly built up his own power and network by being kind to talented individuals and recruiting them to his cause. And then, when the time was right, he made a big move and rebelled against the existing regime, establishing his own new dynasty. Sounds like something out of a movie, right? But Wang Mang's story doesn't end there. After he took power, he implemented a series of reforms that were meant to transform ancient China. Unfortunately, his reforms weren't very successful, and the people began to turn against him. Eventually, his dynasty was overthrown and he was killed. Wang Mang is a pretty controversial figure in Chinese history. Some ancient historians viewed him as a giant traitor who seized the throne through treacherous means, but in more recent times, he's been praised as the first social reformer in Chinese history. So, what's the deal with Wang Mang's reform? Well, let me tell you now. Wang Mang is famous for implementing a controversial land reform. Basically, this land system involved abolishing private land ownership and implementing state ownership of all land. This system is known as Wang Tin system. Each family was allocated a certain amount of land based on the number of male members in the household, and excess land was distributed to neighboring families. The idea was to prevent the concentration of land ownership and ensure that everyone had enough land to live on. Now, on paper, this all sounds pretty good, right? But in practice, this system was highly controversial. Many landowners and bureaucrats were opposed to it, and some even took up arms to resist it. This led to a period of unrest and rebellion in China. So why did Wang Mang implement Wang Tin system in the first place? Well, he saw the issue of land ownership as a major social problem that needed to be addressed. He believed that the concentration of land ownership was leading to the displacement of small farmers and the rise of a wealthy landowning class. By implementing state ownership of land, he hoped to create a more equal and just society. Unfortunately, Wang Tin system was never fully implemented, and it ultimately failed to achieve its goals. But Wang Mang's attempt at social reform is still remembered today as a bold and visionary move. It's a reminder that sometimes, even the best-intentioned reforms can face strong opposition and challenges. Wang Mang is also famous for being a passionate opponent of slavery. You see, during the Han Dynasty, China was an ancient state where slavery was still practiced. But Wang Mang believed that buying and selling human beings was a violation of the basic principles of humanity and justice. He saw slavery as a moral evil that needed to be abolished. So, when he became emperor, he implemented a series of reforms aimed at ending slavery. He prohibited the buying and selling of slaves. This was a radical move that challenged the prevailing social norms of the time. Now, it's worth noting that Wang Mang's reforms didn't completely eliminate slavery. It wasn't until many years later that slavery was finally abolished in China. But Wang Mang's efforts were a crucial step in that direction. So why did Wang Mang care so much about ending slavery? Well, he believed that all human beings were created equal and that everyone had the right to live a life of dignity and freedom. He saw slavery as a violation of those basic rights, and he was determined to put an end to it. Today, we can look back at Wang Mang's efforts and see them as a shining example of humanistic values. He recognized that slavery was an evil that needed to be eradicated, and he was willing to challenge the status quo to make that happen. Apart from that, Wang Mang has also implemented Wu Jun system, which is a planned economy at that time. Now, what's a planned economy, you might ask? 
Well, it's basically a system where the government controls the production and distribution of goods and services. In Wang Bang's case, he implemented a series of policies aimed at controlling prices and preventing hoarding and speculation by merchants. Under Wang Bang's Wu Jun system, the government set prices for basic necessities like grain and cloth, and merchants were not allowed to sell these goods above the government set price. This was meant to prevent the wealthy from exploiting the poor by driving up prices. In times of surplus, the government would purchase goods at the cost of production and hold on to them until they were needed. And in times of shortage, the government would sell these goods at market prices, ensuring that everyone had access to the basic necessities of life. Also, under Wang Mang's rule, industries like alcohol, iron, and salt were all nationalized, meaning they were owned and operated by the state. This was a major departure from the previous system, where wealthy individuals could control these industries for their own profit. In addition to nationalizing key industries, Wang Mang also established a state monopoly on natural resources like minerals and rivers. Private individuals who wished to exploit these resources had to pay taxes and obtain licenses from the government. These policies were controversial at the time, but they were also seen as a bold attempt to address the social and economic problems of the day. Wang Mang believed that a planned economy would help to reduce the gap between rich and poor and ensure that everyone had access to basic necessities. Of course, there were also drawbacks to this system. Critics argued that it stifled innovation and entrepreneurship and that it led to shortages and inefficiencies. And ultimately, Wang Mang's policies were not successful in the long run. But despite its flaws, Wang Mang's planned economy was an important milestone in the history of economic thought. It was a bold attempt to address the problems of inequality and poverty, and it paved the way for future generations to explore new ways of organizing economic activity. Wang Mang's intentions were good, and he wanted to create a fairer and more prosperous society for everyone. But unfortunately, his reforms failed, and they ended up causing more harm than good. The people suffered, and the nation ultimately fell. One of the most significant reforms Wang Mang tried to implement was the Wang Tin system, which aimed to redistribute land and wealth to the people. The idea was that if the government controlled the land, it could ensure that everyone had access to it and that no one would be left without the means to support themselves. However, the implementation of the Wang Tin system was flawed, and it ended up causing chaos and suffering. Wang Mang didn't consider the fact that private land ownership had been ingrained in the culture for centuries, and he didn't take into account the interest of the wealthy landowners who held power at the time. As a result, the Wang Tin system faced strong opposition from those who stood to lose their land and wealth. Rebellion broke out, and the people suffered even more from the resulting violence and instability. Looking back, we can see that Wang Mang's reforms failed because he didn't have a realistic plan for implementing them. He was too idealistic and didn't consider the practical challenges of making such drastic changes to society. He also didn't take into account the interests of those who held power and influence at the time. Wu Jun's system was supposed to be a policy that would help improve the lives of the people, but unfortunately, it ended up being a disaster that made the rich even richer and the poor even poorer. The Wu Jun system was one of the longest running policies implemented by Wang Mang during the Xin Dynasty. It was introduced in 10 and lasted until 22 which was quite an accomplishment considering that Wang Meng had a habit of changing currency systems every few years. The idea behind the Wu Jun system was to control market prices and prevent greedy merchants from taking advantage of the people. The government would regulate prices, and if any goods were sold above the set price, the government would intervene and bring the price down. In theory, this policy should have been a huge benefit to the people. They would be able to buy goods at fair prices, regardless of whether it was a good harvest or a bad one. Plus, the government would buy goods from the people at fair prices, ensuring that they always had a guaranteed market. However, the implementation of the Wu Jun system was flawed. The people in charge of regulating prices were not chosen wisely. In fact, Wang Mang appointed wealthy landowners to the task, which was a huge mistake. These landowners had no interest in helping the common people. They only wanted to enrich themselves, so they manipulated the market to their advantage. As a result, the Wu Jun system failed miserably. The landowners used their power to exploit the people even more, and the situation only got worse. The people suffered, and the economy suffered, leading to a period of great turmoil and hardship. So, what can we learn from this? 
Well, the success of any policy depends on the people who implement it. If you choose the wrong people, no matter how good the policy is, it will fail. And that's exactly what happened with the Wujun system. And that's a wrap. Folks, thank you so much for watching my video on Wang Bang's reforms. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Before you go, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out and motivates me to keep creating more content. Also, I want to hear from you. What topics related to Chinese history, culture, or artifacts would you like me to cover in future videos? Leave a comment and let me know, and I'll do my best to make it happen. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!